Good morning. And welcome to the Church of Christ the King for this, our fourth Sunday after Easter. Fourth Sunday of Easter. Um, For those who don't know me yet, my name is Austin. I'm the rector here. And our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 1 of your bulletins or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls each of us by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name Did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, 
it has become the cornerstone. This is salvation, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. We will read this responsibly by half verse. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He revives my soul. And me along right with his sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, you are God, and you are with me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord The second lesson is a reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him wherever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. By this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good morning to you all. Good morning. On Easter morning, I told the story about my friend Fred, who had encountered the homeless man while getting ready for the sunrise Easter service in San Francisco, and how the man had been pestering him until my friend had told him he had nothing for him, and then the man giving him a fistful of coins and telling him that it was so that he would never again have to tell someone he had nothing for them. After I heard that story, I wasn't able to walk past a homeless person again without at least acknowledging their humanity. And when we were moving to Davis after seminary, the first person we encountered was a man named Bobby, who sat with his big black dog named Jake, um, asking for donations. He was the first one who welcomed us to Davis. He told us that it was a very dog-friendly town. He told us about the green belts um, near most of the neighborhoods where the kids could go and safely play. He was a kind man. After I went to work in Davis, I found often that he was sitting in a parking lot near the church where I worked. And so I would go and sit with him. And I got to hear his story and hear more about his life. He had only had his life together for about 10 years. And at his lowest point, the only one that was there for him was his dog, Jake. And after becoming clean and sober and finding himself able again to rejoin society, he had the option of either leaving Jake behind to move into a halfway house where he could find employment and get into his own place. Or what he did was decided to stay on the streets until Jake had passed away. To him, it was more important to live out the rest of Jake's life with him, the only one who had been there for him. I learned a lot from Bobby, a lot about relationships, a lot about priorities. And every time this Good Friday, this, sorry, this Good Shepherd Sunday comes up, I'm reminded of Bobby and his commitment to his best friend whom he laid down his life for. Very seldom are we asked to lay down our lives in terms of giving it up and dying. But we are asked many times throughout our lives to set aside our priorities, to set aside what we might rather be doing, to set aside time, just to care, to be with our friends, to watch out for those around us, raise our children. This idea of laying down our lives for our friends is an act of love that 
helps to deepen relationships, helps us to enter more deeply into each other's lives and hearts, and offers us the opportunity to find the richness of that true companionship and love that comes from not putting ourselves first, but from finding that space within our hearts, within our lives, to place the other person, at least for a short time, ahead of our own needs. Being a parent, I think, has taught me that more than any other part of my life, as our children constantly demand our time, our energy, our efforts, and demand of us to be our best selves, even when we feel like we can't be. I think part of why I love this Sunday is that model that Christ sets for us. When we hear different stories about him being busy and people coming up to him, I take the story of the little children coming up and the disciples wanting to brush them away. He's too busy to, to see the likes of you. And Jesus says, let the little children come to me. He picks them up. He speaks with them loves them. And that's the model that's set for us as we enter into relationships with each other, as we enter into relationships in our places of faith, as we enter into relationships with those in our workplaces, at our schools, in our lives. Each of us will have those times when we're called upon to set aside what we had been planning to do to just listen, to be a friend, to help those who are feeling down or in need. And that opportunity to grow, to be there for one another, teaches us that love that Christ modeled for us, invites us into a deeper relationship with God and each other. And as we hear in this morning's readings, that is encouraged through each act through each of the stories we heard this morning. Peter setting aside his freedom to heal the man that was on trial with him and being able to proclaim in the spirit the source of that being in Christ and his faith. In John's letter to his followers, exhorting them to lay down their lives for one another, to be true companions and friends a true community that becomes family. And in our gospel, the good shepherd who lays down his life for his flock. In that story, Jesus had healed the man who was blind since birth. And the Pharisees were upset with him because they believed that the man was blind because of deep sin, either of his parents or of himself. And that by healing him, Jesus had transgressed a boundary that boundary that God had set. And in healing the man, and then having the man call the Pharisees to task, saying he couldn't do this if he weren't a prophet, could he? And then the Pharisees coming and questioning Jesus, and Jesus tells a couple of different stories about the shepherd and the sheep. This second story is a little bit lighter on the Pharisees than the first one. In the first one, they were thieves and bandits who came in avoiding the sheep gate and stole the sheep. In this one, they're just likened to the hired hands who run away at the sign of danger. But the idea at the bottom of it is that for those we care about, those who we've formed relationship with, it's perhaps easy to set aside what we may want to do in those times when they really need us. As a faith community, we draw together around those times, as we did yesterday for Karen and Steve's family, as we do countless times for each other when someone is feeling down or sick or in the hospital, making time in our lives to share those moments, to lift people up, remind them they're not alone. It's part of what a family does for each other. So thank you. Thank you for being part of 
a family that takes care of each other. Thank you for being part of a family that we can each count on and for being those good shepherds. Amen. Together let us stand and affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. As we celebrate Earth Day and the splendor of all that you have made and given us, we give thanks to you for your creation, where we seek for you this and every day and for being wonderfully made. We raise up our prayers for your church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kim, our bishop, Austin, our rector, and for all lay and ordained leaders, that we may all work together to honor this fragile earth, our island home. <clears throat> all nurturing God, you embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. <clears throat> Fill us with peace, that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. We ask for the grace to see creation as you do, in all its splendor and suffering. Help us to see the beauty of creation and to hear the cries of the earth and the poor. We pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, that our leaders might work together toward justice, equity, and peace. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes 
Grant us the grace to look closely to see how our life choices impact your good creation, as well as the poor and vulnerable. Help us turn away from the throwaway culture that casts off both people on the margins and our natural resources, and instead stand in solidarity with creation and the poor. We pray for the welfare of this living and intricately interconnected world around us that we might live in harmony. O oh God of reconciliation and care, bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not pray on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth and grant us the grace of conversion towards ecological justice and reconciliation. We pray for the needs of our local community recognizing that justice, healing, and care begins and is needed even right here at home. Pray for protection, safety, wisdom, and guidance for all police officers and first responders. Thanksgiving for their work. I pray for protection, safety, wisdom, and guidance for all firefighters, especially our bad fire stations 6 and 7, Battalion Chief John Simpson, and Battalion Chief Relational God, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Grant us the grace to reconcile our relationship with you, with creation, with humanity, and to stand in solidarity through our actions, that we might better care for for both the hurting earth around us as well as those around us in need. We pray for the sick and suffering and those in any kind of trouble. Blessing God, we thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. <clears throat> we offer our prayers of thanksgivings for the blessings of our lives and hearts. Eternal God, as we pray for the earth and the vulnerable in our society, we remember also those who have died, the countless species of life that will never again be seen in our midst, as well as those we love and whom we no longer see. We pray for those who have died. God of all life, we lift up our prayers to you, trusting in your goodness to bless your sacred creation, both through us and in spite of us. Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And my dear extended Christ the King family, the peace of Christ be always with you.
Well, one more good morning to you all. I'm going to grab my announcement sheet. And before I do, peace to our folks at home. It's good to have you with us. And we do have some announcements this morning found in your bulletins. The open plate offering this Sunday, online designated funds in the collection plate will go to Ralston House in support of our pinwheel garden as we recognize April Child Abuse Prevention Month. The 2024 Parish Directory is coming soon. We bring that out each spring. Um, so please take a moment to edit your current contact information in the directory copy located in the narthex on that table. Um, if anything has changed, you can go in there and fix it. Or if we messed up your listing last year, you can fix that too. This week, um, Monday, um, is Earth Day. That's on the April 22nd. And we have our Cairo Bell Choir rehearsal in the evening. Um, for Earth Day, the climate care team would like to um, share a meditation with you. Um, you'll find it in your bulletins. They also have seed packets for you um, that they'll be distributing today. And Kathy, did you want to say anything else about that? No, Jim. Jim would. <laughs> Excellent. Jim, come on up and tell us. <laughs> Share my microphone with you. There you go. Thank you. Sure. Uh, the seed packets are all native plants, and they're all pollinators. If you look at nature, we are killing off the bees and stuff, and this is a good way to regenerate our plants and increase our bee population. But these are all native uh, eastern plain plants. There is an instruction sheet how to plant them. And May is a good time to start. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Mary. So I have exciting news that on May 19th, we're going to have a pickleball event. On May 19th, we're going to have a pickleball event. Pickleball courts on 82nd and Sims. Well, that's fabulous. Thank you. So if you didn't catch... Excellent. If you didn't hear that, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex um, for the pickleball event. Um, that'll be, you said, at 82nd and Sims. And um, you can come and learn to play pickleball or cheer folks on. And um, if you don't know what pickleball is, it's um, a little like tennis. You use the same court, but it's a bit smaller. And, or if they have specific pickleball courts, um, instead of a racket with um, strings across it, it's a little smaller wooden racket. And um, you hit a ball back and forth over the net. It's a lot of fun. I've been playing it with Luke. <laughs> I'm not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but Luke is. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Tuesday the 23rd, uh, we have contemplative prayer at noon in hybrid. That's both in the parish hall and online on Zoom. At 1230, we have Bible study also in hybrid. We are continuing discussing the first book of Kings. Quite a few stories in there that we don't hear in church. <laughs> if you read it with us, you'll find out why. <laughs> 7 p.m. on Tuesday is Social Justice Conversations. That's on Zoom. Wednesday the 24th at 10 a.m. is our Outreach Committee. That'll be in the Parish Hall. And at 8.30 p.m. is Compline on Zoom. Thursday the 25th at 7 p.m. is our Worshiping Voices Choir Rehearsal. Friday the 26th at 8 a.m. is Morning Prayer on Zoom. And Saturday from 10 to 3 is our Open House Craft Day. And all crafters are welcome. Coming soon, um, next Sunday, I cut out for a second, sorry. 
Um, next Sunday, following next Sunday, I should say, the 29th through the 1st of May is clergy conference. So on Monday, I'll be leaving to go up into the mountains to join uh, the rest of our diocesan clergy for that gathering. And then our next joyful celebration service will be coming up on Saturday, May 4th. And that's a week from next Saturday. Um, that's a service that will have lots of music, a little bit less structured than our Sunday morning Eucharists and invite you to come down and check it out and have some fun. Uh, we'll be doing that quarterly. And it being, of course, May the 4th, and you'll play some uh, inspiring music for us from Star Wars. And I'm not going to say it again, but... Um, <laughs> okay, I am. Uh, may the 4th be with you. And for our CTK family beyond 6490, that being our address here, um, there are some dear friends who are watching Church from Home. Um, so consider waving when you go past the camera with the red light on. Right now that's this one. Often during the piece it's the camera back there by Phil. Um, there are also folks who are on Zoom who are watching that live stream together and um, they tend to stay on in the coffee hour so you can go and visit the computer in the back and say hello to folks who you might like to see but who aren't able to be with us in person. We do have one other announcement, and that factors into our travel prayers for this morning. Um, the Mondragons asked me to let you know that they're excited to go on a pilgrimage um, from Christ the King to Montgomery and Birmingham, Alabama. They'll be leaving this Wednesday and will return next Sunday. The group of 17 will be led by the Reverend Bonnie Spencer, who has come and served here before with us, and Ann Knorr, in conjunction with the Equal Justice Initiative and the Colorado Lynching Memorial. They're joining parishioners from St. Timothy's in Littleton and other churches. This pilgrimage is the result of the work accomplished by a couple of St. Tim's parishioners who researched the unjust murder of Preston Porter Jr. Preston, a black 15-year-old, was burned to death in Limon, Colorado on November 16, 1900, after having a confession forced out of him in the Denver jail in the old city hall by torture and threats that the same would happen to his dad and brother. The pilgrims will carry dirt from the site of the torture at uh, 14th and Larimer Street, where a marker now stands, and from the site of the murder in Limon. A marker has not been allowed to be erected there. The group will also walk in the footsteps of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and other brave civil rights leaders as they visit key sites of the struggle for justice and equality in the two cities. And so we'll be um, praying for your safe travel today. And on that note, are there birthdays, anniversaries, travels, or other special occasions you'd like to share with the community in prayer? A birthday for Rick, travel for Mary, and travels. <laughs> well, if you will join me on page 830, toward the back of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll have our birthday prayer and then we'll pray for our travelers. Watch over your child, O Lord, as his days increase. Bless and guide him wherever he may be. Strengthen him when he stands. Comfort him when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise him up if he falls. And in his heart, may your peace which passes understanding Abide all the days of his life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And for our travelers. O God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Safe travels and happy birthday. Sounds great. Daniel, just let me know that the conversations on um, justice, social justice and racial reconciliation will be meeting on the 30th after their trip so they can fill in the group and uh, plan something to present to us as a parish. So thank you for going on the pilgrimage. 
Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice of love. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless. Throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. 
joining with them and giving voice to every creature under her heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, heart and mind, heaven and earth, all of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed. We acclaim, you, we acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share in this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father. 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome at God's table. Please join with me in the prayer of spiritual communion in honor of those not able to be with us in person. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated. We gather at your table, whether virtually or physically, to receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood. We beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts, Lord Christ. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, to make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.